to Jesus is Lord Church. We're so excited that you've chosen to worship with us today. If you have any questions or concerns, make sure you stop by our Connect station for more information. Attention Jesus is Lord family, our JILC Dream Team is currently recruiting for media and worship. If you're interested in being a part of these two powerful groups, you can sign up today at any of the Connect Centers. JILC Dream Team, we're better together. JILC Family Empowered Kids is the place to be every Sunday morning for your children. Fun, games, activities, and ministry that's right on their level is sure to make an impact on their lives for Jesus. If your kids are missing Empowered Kids, they're missing it. Empowered Kids, every Sunday morning, right here at Jesus' Lord Church. Empowered Live is now broadcasting with a live studio audience. If you'd like to be a part of these powerful world changers that are helping take the gospel of Jesus around the globe, we'll see you this Monday at 7 p.m. Doors closed at 7.15 with a 7.30 broadcast start time. Empowered Live, empowering the body of Christ to live for Him today. Are you looking to go deeper in your walk with God? Join us every Monday at 6.30 p.m. for our Jesus is Lord Church Monday Bible Study. Dive deeper into biblical truths that will transform the way that you look at your world. Jesus is Lord Monday Bible Studies, every Monday at 6.30 p.m. Are you ready for a little pick-me-up to help you get through your work week? Join us every Calling all teenagers ages 13 to 19. Are you ready to show the next generation the love of God? Join our Empowered Youth Services on the second Friday of every month. Services begin at 7 p.m. Young adults ages 20 to 40, are you committed to creating a culture that connects and cares? Join us for our next Young Adult Night on the third Friday of every month. Services begin at 7 p.m.
This is Pastor Kevin McGinnis, and welcome to Jesus as Lord Church. Today is going to be an amazing day, and I believe this word is going to encourage you, inspire you, no matter what you're facing in your life. I don't know if you need a miracle. I don't know if you need healing in your marriage. Maybe you're believing for deliverance of a child, but I believe the word of God has the answer to every circumstance. I want you to take an opportunity right now. Hit that share button so we can multiply, maximize the impact for eternity. We love each and every one of you. Stay tuned. We're going into worship. It's going to be an amazing day. our hands and we worship yeah yeah you are king cause we're here for you and we give let's give about everything this is the day that you have made and we rejoice Everybody say, I touch from you. Put your hand like this, like this, like this. Come on, I touch from you. I just want to see Jesus as Lord. Put your hands together. excited to be in God's house this morning. We're going to raise a hallelujah in this place today. Put your hand like this. Come on. Put your hands like this. Come on. Sing 
Those hands come on louder and loud. Gonna hear my praises roar up from the ashes. Hope will arrive. Death is defeated. The king is alive. I say, I'm gonna sing, say, in the middle of the storm. Louder and louder. You're gonna hear my praises roar. One last time, all hands are lifted, come on. And I'm gonna sing in the middle of the storm. Right in the middle of the storm. You're gonna hear my praises roar. Come on. Love from the ashes, oh, will arise. Death is the beating, the king is alive. Somebody praise him because you win, you win, gosh. Come on, if you're filled with the Holy Spirit, just begin to speak it out. 
God, we come together this morning to worship you. Oh, we thank you, Lord, that you know our name. your name lift your hand Yeah. 
Oh, we worship you, Jesus. Come on, just lift your hands. Lift your voice. There's a sweet presence in the room this morning. Come on, use your weapon this morning. continue to play and the man of God is going to come soon but until that happens can we just lift our hands all over this place and just reverence you know it's funny we can reverence him when he does great things for us when we actually take the time to stop and think about the goodness of Jesus but I want you just to reverence his presence in here I want you just to reverence the mere fact that he is God Almighty Jehovah Jireh Messiah the one and only true God the one and only righteous God he's a righteous king come on he's a holy God Lift your hands, Zion. Lift your hands, Zion. He's worthy. Come on, you don't need a lyric. Let your worship be the lyric. You don't need a song. Let your worship be the song. I will bless the Lord. I will bless the Lord at all times. Come on, lift your voice. Come on. Lift your voice. Come on. Dive in. Dive in. He's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy. Worshippers, you got 20 more seconds. Lift your voices. Yeah. Yeah. Come on. He's an awesome God. He's an awesome God. Whoa. Hallelujah. Worthy is. voices come on when you think about him and all he's done for you your hands should raise now come on lift it up worthy worthy is 
Spirit in this place. Lift your hands in reverence. You're here to heal, you're here to heal. Raise your hearts to heal, raise your hands to heal. Let's stand. I want everybody in this room to take 30 seconds and give God the highest praise you can give him right now. You could do better than that. 
I want you to take 30 seconds and give God the highest praise for what he's done for you. Forget about everybody else. Take 30 seconds. Go ahead. Take 30 seconds. You cannot tell me that God has delivered you and set you free and you are not grateful. Be grateful people give God incredible praise. Come on, lift your voice. Lift your voice. It's good to be back. We're so glad to be here today in the house of God with you. How many of you are glad we're back? How many of you are glad that we're back? Come on, somebody. We're glad to be here today. And I believe today that the Lord has given me a word for your life. I want you to lift your hands before you're seated. You sit down too long. I want you to lift your hands because so many people, when they sit down, they go to sleep. Wake up today. You're in the place where the presence of God is. It is impossible. I want you to hear me very carefully. It is impossible for you to be exposed to the presence of God and leave the same that you came. Leave the same way that you came. But I believe today that the presence of God is in this place. How many of you sense his presence? Lift your hand. You sense his presence. So today I want you to know that the presence of God is in this place. And the Bible says, where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Come on, somebody. If you're free, let me hear you shout. If you're free, let me hear you praise God. Where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. And I believe today there is a spirit of freedom in this place. And if you came bound and you came today dealing with an issue in your life, I believe today that the power of God can set you free. Maybe you're here joining us online. The presence of God that is here will touch you out there. Somebody shout aloud, hallelujah. Slap somebody high five and tell them, say, March. Tell them, say, March is your month for more. Turn around tell somebody, say, March is your month for more. More miracles, more victory, more testimony, more favor, more breakthrough, more deliverance. Tell somebody, slap them a high five, take at least three steps and get your steps in on your, your health app. Tell somebody, say, March is your month for more. If you believe this is your month that you will see the favor of God explode in your life, I want you to lift your voice and give God a shout of victory in this place. Come on, lift your voice and shout. Lift your voice and shout. Give me a little bit of him in my ears. Just a little bit. Today I begin a brand new series and I'm excited about it. I can't wait to deliver this word. And I believe today that if you receive this word into your heart, it is impossible for things not to change in your life. Because the word of God always produces transformation. You may be seated in the presence of God. It is so important that the word of God is preached. God is not obligated to my opinion. God is not obligated to my revelation. God is obligated to his word. The Bible says the prophet Isaiah declared, he said, not one word that flows from the mouth of God shall return void. Because God cannot fail. And God cannot lie. And God cannot disappoint. God is true to his word. Somebody shout aloud, hallelujah. Today I want to preach to you a message entitled, Hope Has a Name. Everybody shout that name if you know it. I'm in the wrong church maybe. Maybe I should have stayed another week on vacation. Tell somebody hope has a name. Turn around, tell somebody his name is Jesus. He says there is no other name given among men under heaven whereby we can be saved but by the name of Jesus. How many of you know Jesus today? Can I see your hand if you know Jesus? How many of you are serving Jesus? How many of you have been saved, set free from the power of the devil? You've been saved. You've been redeemed. And the Bible says you've got an obligation. Psalm says let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Everybody shout I've been redeemed out of the hand of the enemy. So today I want to talk to you about the power of the promise. We need to understand as we're leading up to the greatest celebration in the church, in the church. This is the Super Bowl season for the church. Resurrection Sunday, the time that we celebrate the greatest miracle ever to happen in all of human history. The resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Tell somebody he's not dead. He's alive. So act like you're alive today. Put a smile on your face. Get a spring in your step. You're a son and daughter of the Most High God. Somebody shout, Jesus is alive. He's not dead. The 
cross couldn't hold him. The grave couldn't stop him. He arose triumphant and victorious over all the power of hell. I came to preach today. Push somebody and say, are you alive? Because he's alive. Open up your mouth and shout, my Savior lives. Tell somebody, God is with me today. That's why it's important that people do not oppose you. Because when they oppose you, they oppose God. And God that stands with you is greater and more powerful and more. Come on, somebody, than anything that opposes your life. Everybody shout, God is on my side. I love what the psalmist said. The Lord is on my side. I will not fear. What can man do unto me? Shout, God is on my side. So we have the prophecy and the promise concerning the greatest gift ever given to all of humanity. Everybody shout, 700 years before the coming of Christ, before the birth of Jesus from the womb of a virgin. It was prophesied, it was predicted, and it was promised that Jesus would be born. Born for a purpose. Born to save men from their sins. Born to redeem you and I from every curse of the devil. He was born. He was born to die. But aren't you glad that our Savior didn't stay dead? That there was a day 2,000 years ago that death died. He overthrew the grave. He overthrew hell. He overthrew the devil. Everybody shout, I've got power. I've got power over hell. We live victorious over death because we are a child of the living God. I guess some of you were sleeping all the last two weeks. I came to wake you up today. Tell somebody, my Savior is alive. 800 years before his birth, Hosea predicted, he prophesied that Christ would be born. Isaiah chapter number 9 and verse 6 and 7, Isaiah the prophet proclaimed, he said, he said he shall be born. His name shall be called Wonderful Counselor. Say it together, Wonderful Counselor. Everybody shout, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, pr the Prince of Peace. He said, because of him, Isaiah declared that out of the darkness that Christ would shine. He would shine. He would shine as light in the midst of darkness. Everybody shout, Wonderful Counselor. Shout it out. I said, shout it. I didn't say whisper. I didn't come to play church. I came to preach the gospel today. Everybody Everybody shout, wonderful counselor. Shout, mighty God. Declare it, everlasting Father. He is the Prince of Peace. Isaiah proclaimed a light. He would be shining in the midst of the darkness. There is no hope without Christ. There is no hope for America. I want every one of you right now that are watching and you believe that America should become a socialist nation. Let me tell you today, the only answer for America is not a Republican a Democrat or a liberal the answer for America is Jesus Christ the son of the living God if you know him leap out of your chair and shout I know him for myself hope is the gift of God hope is the greatest gift to the believer in 1 Corinthians chapter 13 I'm pumped up I'm ready are you ready shout I'm ready preach pastor in 1 Corinthians 13 in verse 13 he says these three things will last forever say these three things are the only things that will last forever. Everybody shout faith. Declare it with me. I've got faith. Shout I got hope. Tell somebody don't lose hope. Tell somebody don't lose hope. You don't know what the person's dealing with. You don't know what they came in here with today. Tell somebody don't lose hope for these three things remain forever. It is faith. It is hope. And it is love. And the greatest of all these things is and the greatest of all these things is, come on, Bible students, that's why you've got to study your Bible. That's why you've got to memorize your Bible. That's why you've got to live your Bible. Everybody shout faith, hope, and love. And the greatest of these is love. Everybody shout the greatest of these is love. Say it together, faith, hope, and love. Shout it, it will last forever. Faith is what produces joy. Faith produces joy unspeakable. In 1 Corinthians, it talks about faith and hope and love. Faith produces confidence. Faith brings hope. Faith blesses your life. When you've got faith, it produces a blessed life. I love what 1 John chapter 5 declares. In 1 John, the fifth chapter, the fourth verse, it's good to be back, Rick. I'm so 
excited I'm about to fly off this platform. My God, Keith, get that mug off your face and put a smile on today. I came to preach the word of God. Today you might get saved. Tell somebody, today is your day for a miracle. I feel the Holy Ghost right now. I'm here to tell you that my faith is not in man and my faith is not in medicine and my faith is not in this world's economy. My faith is in God, the creator of heaven and earth. Somebody shout, preach, pastor. Tell somebody he's already preaching. He's only in the pulpit five minutes. First John chapter five, verse four, that there is a faith. Faith is the victory that overcomes the world. Faith, the only way we overcome the world, according to first John, the fifth chapter, the fourth verse, is that our faith overcomes the world and we have victory over the world because of faith. Everybody shout, my faith gives me victory over the world. My faith is not subjected to this world and I am not governed by the laws of this world but I am governed by the laws of the heavenly kingdom and my God is the king of the kingdom and as a citizen of the kingdom I've got rights and I'm not like most people in this room. I made up my mind years ago that I'm going to have everything that God has promised me. I'm going to have everything God has promised my wife. I'm going to have everything God has promised my family. I ref Tell somebody, say, are you alive today? Faith gives you victory in your personal life. Faith gives you victory in your business. Faith gives you victory in your professional life. Faith gives you victory in your spiritual life. Faith gives you victory over sickness, depression, disease, depravity. Everybody shout, I've got faith in God. <laughs> say it together, I've got faith in God. Tell somebody, don't put your faith in man. Don't put your faith in your boo. Don't put your faith in your bay. Don't put your faith in anything but God. Faith in God can move your mighty mountains. Faith in God can cool the brow of your favorite child. Faith in God can bring dead things back to life. Faith in God will cause the word to manifest. Faith in God will give you victory every time. Somebody said, I got faith in God. Faith gives you victory over sickness. Faith gives you victory over disease. Faith gives you victory over depression. Somebody shout hallelujah. Faith gives you victory over all fear, insecurity about your future. Many are fearful today. I'm talking about many are fearful today, even in this church, because of what's happening in our country. They're fearful for their children, and they're fearful for America's future. But faith gives you victory over every form of fear. For God has not given you a spirit of fear, but of love and of power. Somebody on this side shout and get healed and get a miracle. Somebody in this section get up and shout and be made whole. I declare there's faith that is activated when the word is preached. So then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Shout amen somebody. Tell somebody I've got faith and when you got faith and you're full of faith you have no room for fear Don't tell me you got faith, but you're murmuring and you're complaining and you're always talking about your sickness and your issues. You have no faith. You've got to replace your faith. You've got to replace your fear with your faith. You should be full of faith. And when you're full of faith and you feed your faith, your doubts, your fears begin to die. Shout amen, somebody. It is impossible to please God without faith. It is impossible to please God without out faith. Say with me, it's impossible to please God without faith. Faith is not an emotion. Faith is not an emotion. Faith is a decision that I will believe God in spite of all odds that are against me. That's faith. It's not about your feeling. It's about a decision that I'm going to believe God. Faith is more than a feeling. It's a decision. Faith is more than an attitude. It's an action. Shout amen somebody. This is not a day to sit there dead as 3 o'clock in the morning. This is your month for more. And this is your might of the opposition. There are over 3,000 promises in this book. Over 3,000 promises in the word of God. And none of them will work for you until you use your faith. Say that with me. Nothing will work until I use 
my faith. The word of God is my source of faith. The Bible tells us in Romans chapter number 10 and verse 17 that faith comes by hearing and hearing how? By the word of God. That's why some of you need to get your butts back to church because you're sitting home feeling sorry for yourself. The Bible says in Hebrews the 10th chapter say not the assembling of yourselves together especially in the day and hour when we see these things unfolding upon the earth we need to get back to church we don't need to come to church less we need to come to church more we don't need less of the word we need more of the word we don't need less worship we need more worship we don't need less prophecy we need more prophecy we don't need less miracles we need more miracles everybody shout hallelujah somebody said well I like teaching ministry and that's wonderful but it is preaching that will give you the miracle some of you have been so taught you're so fat you can't even move. You are so stuffed with the word. It's not what you hear. It's what you live. It's not what you know. It's what you apply. Somebody shout my faith is growing. Say it together. My faith is growing. Shout my faith is growing. My faith is increasing right now because the word of God is the factory of faith. This is where faith is produced. This is where the word of God becomes a reality when you open up your faith. That's why Hebrews said Paul St. Paul said, he said this in Hebrews 11 and 1. He said, now faith is. Say it with me. Now faith is. See, some of you got yesterday's faith. You got past faith. Some of you got futuristic faith. But faith is not believing God can one day. Faith is believing God can do it now. Shout amen somebody. Faith is. Here it is. The substance of things. What? hoped for the evidence of things shall not seen can you say amen everybody shout out faith is coming alive everybody say faith is coming alive how is faith coming alive by the preaching of the word of God I love what Romans chapter 1 verse 17 Paul said this for the just shall live by his faith stay with me I'm going somewhere say that with me the just say it together the just not the sinner, the just shall live by his faith. How many of you have faith? Wave your hand if you got faith. The just shall live by his faith. Everybody shout, I live by faith. I love what Paul said, this life that I now live, I don't live, I, even though I live it in the flesh, I don't live in the flesh. I live it by faith in the Son of God that loved me and gave himself for me. So we understand that we don't live in the emotional realm. We have emotions, but we're not controlled by our emotions. You are not spiritual if you're controlled by your feelings. You, you're not spiritual if you're always acting on your feelings and what you feel and what you're going through. But the Bible says that the righteous, the just, shall live by his faith. I'm excited. Are you excited to be here today? Put a smile on your face. The just shall live. Everybody shout, I'm living by faith. I'm not living by feelings. I'm not living by what I see. I'm not living based on what enters my ear gate. I'm not living based on my emotions. It doesn't matter what I see. It doesn't hinder what I believe. It doesn't matter what they say. I don't let what they say cancel what he said about me. Shout amen somebody. The just, say it together, the just shall live by his faith. Lift both your hands in the front row. Lift both your hands in the front row and shout the just shall live by faith. Faith, faith, faith. Just a little bit of faith. You don't need a lot. Just use what you got. We used to sing that a long time ago around this church. All you need is a little bit of faith. Faith can move your mighty mountains. Faith can turn your mess into a miracle. Faith can turn your trial into to the greatest testimony of your life. Everybody shout, I'm living by faith. I'm not listening to what the world's saying. I'm not listening to what the fake news is saying. My eyes are on the prize. And I'm like, God, I'm excited today because I know Jesus is coming very soon. Some of you, you wouldn't be depressed if you knew the hope of your calling. I have a hope. My hope is in Jesus. My hope is not in a church. My hope is not in a religious affiliation or denomination. My hope is in Jesus. Somebody shout, my hope is in Jesus. If you put your hope in man, you're going to be discouraged and you're going to be depressed. My hope is in God, the creator.
creator of heaven and earth. Shout amen, somebody. Everybody shout, I got faith that not only can God do it, but he can do it now. Say it, he can do it now. He can heal you now. You can jump up right now and be healed. You can shout right now and be delivered. You can dance your way into victory. Shout, 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 shout. God gave Abraham hope for his future. In Romans chapter number 4 and verse 18, who contrary to hope, the Bible says, in the spite of impossibility, Abraham believed against hope, believed in hope. Against opposition, in the midst of impossibility, he had hope against hope. Everybody shout, I got hope. When everything is against my hope, somebody shout amen. What is hope? It means to have a sense of expectation that God's answer is coming based on what God promised in his word. Let me say that again. Hope is to have a sense of expectation that God's answer is coming based on what God has promised in his word. Well, you got to know the word of God to be encouraged. You got to know the word of God to live a victorious life daily. I love what Jeremiah 29, 11, he says, for I know, everybody shout, I know. Everybody shout, oh, I know. The plans I have for you, saith the Lord. They are plans for good and not for evil. Plans for your future and a hope. Everybody shout, I've got hope. Tell somebody, don't lose the, your hope. Don't let go of your promise. Don't let go of your word. Don't let the enemy steal the power of hope out of your hands. This word is a, is a rope of hope. It's going to pull many people out of a dark place. I said this word is a rope of hope that's going to pull people out of a dark place. I'm here to tell you that Jesus, he was in a dark place, but he didn't stay down. He arose with all power in his hand on the the third day he conquered hope is something that sees the invisible feels the intangible and achieves the impossible hope puts faith to work when doubting is very easy the Bible says in Romans chapter 5 and 5 that hope everybody say hope, hope. say it together hope, hope maketh not ashamed say that with me hope maketh not ashamed. That means if your hope is in God, you will never be ashamed. When your hope is in God, not man, when your hope is in God, you will never be ashamed. When your faith is in God, you will never be disappointed. Somebody shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hope maketh you not ashamed. Proverbs 13, 12 says, Hope deferred makes the heart sick. But when it comes true, the Bible says, It becomes a tree of life. Say that with me. Hope deferred makes the heart sick. But the Bible says, When, it, when the Bible says it comes true, There is a tree of life. There's more hope today for a confused sinner than a conceited saint. There are so many conceited people in this world. It should not be in the church. People that are bound by pride are conceited. Humility brings honor. Humility brings promotion. Humility brings prosperity. Somebody shout hallelujah. There's no hope for you when you refuse to repent of pride. God says, I resist the proud, but I give grace unto the humble. Somebody shout aloud, amen. There's no hope for you if you're conceited. You refuse to repent. You're bound by pride. Somebody say amen. It was Hebrews chapter 10. St. Paul said in Hebrews 10, 23, put it on the screen, please. Are you glad I'm back still? Say amen. Let us hold fast the confession of our hope for he who promised is faithful. You've got to hold fast the confession of our hope for he that promised he is faithful to his word. 
Say with me, God is faithful to his word. Don't let go of the word. Don't let go of your precious promises. Don't lose hope, no matter what you're dealing with right now. Because for a believer and a child of faith, there is always hope beyond the scope of your impossibilities. Can somebody say amen? See, when you're focused on God, nothing is impossible. Say amen. I love what Hebrews chapter 12 and 2 says, looking unto Jesus, looking unto Jesus. Everybody shout, I'm looking at Jesus. My eyes are not on man. I'm not looking to the left. God said to Joshua, don't look to the right. Don't look to the left, but look forward. Be strong and be very courageous for I'll be with you wherever you go. Don't allow, some of you hear me, you cannot allow any distractions in your life. You you cannot allow it. It will destroy you. That's a warning right there from the Holy Ghost. You've got to make up your mind. I'm going to set my forehead as flint. I'm looking forward. I'm single-minded. I'm not going to live another year with blurred vision. I'm not looking to the left. I refuse to look to the right. i got my eyes on Jesus, the author and the finisher of my faith. And when you got your eyes on Jesus, you don't lose hope. Your faith is not weakened. You don't walk around depressed. You're not a negative person anymore. You're not a complainer anymore. But you've been set free by the power of a living God. Shout amen. Jesus is the author and the finisher of my faith. Jesus started us out. Say amen. And he that gave you your start has guaranteed you a glorious finish. Shout amen. The church is the answer for the world. The world is not the answer for the church. Government is not the answer. The church is the answer. Shout amen somebody. Well, I hope Trump gets back in. People, it doesn't matter who's in government, who's in the Oval Office. It's who's down bowing in prayer around the altar. That's going to change the world. Can somebody shout aloud, hallelujah. Looking, the Bible says. It was Titus that declared, if you love the word of God, you're going to love this preacher. If you don't like the word, you ain't going to like this church. Amen. Looking for the blessed hope. And the glorious appearing of our great God and Savior. Somebody shout, Jesus Christ. Isaiah prophesied. Hosea prophesied concerning the promise. The Bible says that they predicted hundreds and hundreds of years before the coming of Christ that a Savior would be born. A baby would be born of the womb of a virgin. And that promise came to pass. Somebody shout aloud, hallelujah. If you won't shout for Jesus, nothing else I have to say will mean nothing to you. I said, I want you to shout for Jesus. Now, my God, we have the blessed hope. This is the blessed hope. There's nothing else in this world that excites me more than knowing that I have the blessed hope. One day my king will appear with a crown of unfading glory. I can't wait to meet him in the air. Can somebody shout aloud hallelujah? If you don't know what I'm preaching about, you're not saved. The blessed hope, the rapture, the catching away of the bride of Christ. Say amen. amen. Trusting in Christ's soon return and our ultimate victory will sustain us in the days that we're living in. We are living right now in dark days of disillusionment. We are living in times that Jesus said in Matthew 24. Matthew 24, those of you that know your Bible, you know that Matthew 24 is the spine of Bible prophecy. In Matthew 24, in verse 42, Jesus said, not Pastor Kevin, not your favorite TV or social media preacher, but Jesus said, when you see these things coming upon the earth, look at me, look right at me. Too many distractions in this room. Stop moving around while I'm preaching. Somebody's soul is in jeopardy and you're distracting people. He said this, Jesus said, keep watch, pay attention. 
He said in Matthew 24, watch because you do not know when the day of the Lord shall come. In other words, he says, don't be afraid when you see these things. Tell somebody, don't be afraid. It's going to get a whole lot worse in America. People don't believe that, but it does.